Hey, what's up guys? It's Phil and welcome back to 3D Japan and today we're talking about something that's not yet available but it's going up on Kickstarter very soon. It's the Riverpoint Mini 3D Scanner. This is supposed to be uh, a little bit different from the other ones I reviewed. It does not use an infrared light. So let's uh, open it up and see what's inside. Okay, uh, first of all they sent me a little bit of 3D scanning spray. I don't know if this is going to be included with the Kickstarter or if they just sent it to me for reviewing purposes. But uh, yeah, so just so you know that's there. Uh, then inside this box uh, we've got a calibration board for a calibrating scanner if need be. Uh, oh, we just got a little letter, some information for me as a reviewer. And let's get this out. <laughs> and then in here we have a power adapter and power cord. And those are for the turntable. This is similar to the turntables. In fact, I think it might be the same as one of the other turntables that I've got. Uh, on the bottom it says turntable. But it's got the dots on it. Uh, pretty much the same. You plug it in, hit the power switch, and it'll just continuously rotate. Now, the main event. The uh, Riverpoint Mini. Now this is like an early bird version. It's not 100% working just yet. Not all the features are available. So, let's see. It's just got some nice padding in it. Hey, what do we have here? There's a little packet, with some goodies. We got some registration stickers, some blue tack, uh, black cloth. I'm betting this is all the same stuff that I got with the Riverpoint Pop and Pop 2. Let's see. Oh, got like a little mini calibration board. That's different. I'm not sure what that's for. We'll find that out. And can get this out. Got a, what is this? Warranty card. Uh, yep. Black plastic, yep, stickers, and uh, blue tack. Okay, got cables. This is two-in-one mobile cable. This will be for connecting it to your phone, uh, although I, that feature is not quite available yet on this one. I'm assuming it will become available, and I can do a video showing that later. <clears throat> USB-C to micro B 3.0 cable. Okay, this is a proprietary cable. We'll connect uh, the scanner to your computer. USB-A 3.0 to micro B 3.0 cable. So this is the same thing. It's just uh, using uh, USB-A instead of C. A little tripod. It's uh, very nice. Got a little rubbery grip. Should extend. Yep. Yeah. And little feet pop out. Very small feet. But, you know, as long as there's no heavy wind, it should work all right. And then it'll double as a handle for handheld scanning. So, that's convenient. And this one's a little bit different from the Pop 1, where it doesn't have a screw on top. It just has a thing that it just clicks in. And then a button you press to release it. So, that's a lot easier than having to screw it on. Phone adapter. So your phone will fit in there and then attach onto the tripod. A little mini bust to scan. This one's a bit smaller than the ones I had before. Where's uh, this one? This is the other one I had. <laughs> it's quite a difference. Uh, so that tells me this should be able to scan smaller objects. The main event, the scanner itself. Now this early bird version is missing the filter over the front, so they included a warning for me to not touch any of the sensors. So I will not be doing that. Now I've got a little info on it. Okay, let's see. We got a. Uh, it has a 0.02 mil. 
0.02 millimeter accuracy, uh, 10 frames per second scan speed, 0.1 millimeter point distance. That's pretty small. Um, let's see, it's uh, 64 by 118 millimeter single capture range. Uh, 10 by 10 by 5 millimeter minimum scan volume. Yeah, that's, that's really small. Uh, various professional scan modes. Uh, new accessories. Uh, stabilizer will be released with the Mini. Hmm. Uh, RGB feature will... Oh, R okay, so right now uh, it does not have the RGB, so it won't be scanning any color textures, but it will in the future. Uh, let's see. Uh, comes with the free software. Uh, and it combines two scanning modes, handheld or stationary, on a turntable. Okay, so there we go. That's everything in the box. Let's put it all together and scan something. Okay, we're back and I've got everything all set up. Um, first thing first, I want to mention, uh, I mentioned this calibration board earlier. I believe they sent this to me to use on the POP2, so this would not be included with this one. Uh, it would probably be using this one that came with it, so ignore the fact that I said this one. Set that away. Okay, second thing, please like and comment and subscribe on the video. I'm getting really close to 10,000 subscribers. It would be really great if we can hit that. And let's say I set a, a goal for today to get 200 likes on this video. So anyway, let's get on with the scanning. So I did a test scan on our little bust here and uh, Everything came out really good, so I, I was excited about it. So I went ahead and made a, a little 3D render of him. And so you can see how that works here. So for my next scan, I've got this controller that kind of looks like a game controller, but it's actually for a, a toy a RC helicopter. And uh, I thought this would be cool to scan as a test. So I'm going to put this on here. Uh, actually, I'm, since it's black and it has some shiny areas, I'm going to be spraying it with some of the uh, spray. And this is the one that will wear off after four hours. We'll see how that, that happens. But uh, yeah, so I'm going to spray this and then I'll be right back. All right, it's all sprayed up. Uh, I've never used any of this before, so I don't really know how it works, but a little bit of it did come off from my fingers. I'm hoping that'll be all right. Uh, so, uh, get the software running here. I'm gonna start my uh, screen capture recording for you. And I'm gonna hook up the, where are we? There we go. I'll hook up the scanner. And you'll notice right away soon as it connects, the projector light just comes on. Uh, hopefully <laughs> this will connect right away. But I, here we go. I've noticed that uh, it seems to, like the projector comes on and uh, then it just stays on until you disconnect it. There it is. Okay, so let's, uh, it looks like it's already set at the excellent position. Uh, if it was, you know, too close or too far, it would tell me up at the top here. So, I'm not getting much of the object in there. Let's turn the turntable on. Okay, so I might have to move the object or turntable around a little bit to make sure I can get everything. But let's uh, start it. Okay, we'll go up here to new scan. And I'm going to have it on high accuracy scan. Uh, 
See, I'll set it to feature mode since you can't really see that many of the markers here. And no color because, like I said, the RGB is not currently working on this one. It will be uh, by the time it ships. Uh, let's see. OK. All right, it looks pretty good. Just looking to see if I should adjust the exposure. Okay, if I bring it up, I see a lot of red on there, which means it's probably too high. So I'll bring it back down to level one. It looks pretty good. Okay, let's start scanning. And here it goes. And it, it looks like it's already getting really good detail. Okay, so that's uh, pretty much one full rotation there. Let's hit pause. Maybe, I don't know if I just move this entire thing over, if that'll be better. Let's find out. Continue. Okay. Okay, that seems to work pretty well. Yeah, I can see that spot where my fingerprint was, is not getting scanned on there. So I guess when you use this kind of spray, you have to be still careful to, you don't know, touch it too much. Uh, just like when I'm using the, uh, the dry shampoo that I spray on here. Okay, let's pause it again. And I don't know, I'll try to move it towards me this time. Know if that'll help. Let's see. Okay, I finished scanning the controller, and uh, so I had a little trouble at first because it was so symmetrical. It was having trouble matching the different parts together. So what I ended up doing was uh, doing three scans, uh, the front, the back, and one around the sides. And then I brought that into the Revo Studio and merged them all together. And you can take a look at the results here. So th I think that came out really nice. Uh, I also did a few rings, a little bit of jewelry, uh, just as a test. Uh, I had to use some of the blue tack to hold it standing up, uh, so it, it didn't scan the bottom, but it's the bottom is nothing. It's easy enough to just remodel that part. So I thought I'd do another, one more scan that's uh, something a little different. <laughs> do this, uh, this bike helmet. I thought it had some really interesting shapes on it. It might be fun to scan. Uh, of course, it's very shiny and it's very dark, so I am going to have to spray it with the uh, 3D scanning spray. Uh, so uh, we'll do, take the turntable away and I'll do it in handheld mode and we'll see how that works. Okay, so I've got uh, the 3D scanning spray all over the helmet and I've added some marker dots, so we're going to try using marker mode to scan it and I'll do it handheld. So let's uh, come up here to new scan, and we're going to set to marker mode, click OK, alright, looks pretty good, and let's start. Okay, so I didn't get all of it, but that is definitely enough to use as reference if you wanted to 
change this and make some accessories for it. So maybe put like a mohawk on there or some spikes. Uh, you could you bring this into your 3D program, uh, model of things right on it, and then print it out or manufacture it somehow, and you'd be able to glue it right on there. So there's my first look at the Riverpoint Mini. It's really interesting, and I think it did a really good job in some uh, aspects. If you could get the the lighting right and you get the color right, uh, you know, using some spray on shiny and dark objects, it can really do some really good scans. So I'm happy with it. Yeah. Um, so like I was talking about with this helmet, uh, if you wanted to scan it and make some spikes or something to, to glue on there, and you could do that. And uh, so I, I said, why don't I go ahead and do it? So I, I designed this in Lightwave 3D and uh, printed it out. It's printed on the uh, Ender 3 V2 and using, this is Polymaker, and make sure I get the name right. Uh, it is Polymaker Silk Blue, I believe it's called. Uh, but yeah, you could stick that right on there. I think it's slightly warped, but it's flexible, so you could glue that on there like that. Yeah, <laughs> I think that's, that's just fun. Okay, so yeah, so if you liked this video, if you learned something about the pop, <laughs> pop, if you learned something about the Riverpoint Mini, um, you know, please give it a like, uh, subscribe, and leave a comment below, and I'll see you next time.